Is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera OG a viable candidate as a vlogging camera? Well, you tell me. Or I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's my video. Now, truth be told, I'm not much of a vlogger. Brief exception back in 2010 when I was a news reporter, but that was sort of before vlogging was a thing, doesn't really count. Now, personally, I just don't find my day-to-day -day life to be that interesting and worthy of being in a vlog. But all that aside, I have a lot of respect for people that do vlog and who vlog well. And I do understand that it is an important mode of communication for a lot of people and entertainment for others. So all that said, I obviously spend a lot of time on this channel talking about this camera and people have written me directly to say, is this an option for me? as a vlogger. Now you may be wondering why on earth would you want to use this camera as a vlogging camera, especially how I've gone over time and time again how great this is for lockdown cinema style production work. But believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to own multiple cameras. They'd ideally like to have one thing that gets the job done for them, regardless of what it is they're actually shooting. So if they're buying this to shoot quality production work, uh, short films and whatnot, but they're also into vlogging, they might not want to be dumping money into multiple camera systems. They'd rather just have something to cover all of their bases. Now there's a lot to love about this camera as far as using it as a vlogging camera and a few things that if you're used to more traditional, newer camera systems that you may not find optimal, if you wanted to use this for vlogging, I'm gonna go over all that today, as well as tell you what you need to add to this camera to make it vlogger friendly. And from that, you can decide if this is actually gonna be an option for you in whatever it is that you're using it for. But first, if you're new to the channel, if you're just joining us, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Now, one of the first obstacles many people feel they need to overcome with this camera is the small sensor size. Now, it's a micro four thirds mount, but a super 16 size sensor, which is smaller than micro four thirds, which means you're dealing with about a 2.88 crop factor. And that translates into making it sometimes difficult for you to find a lens that's wide enough to use especially if you're gonna be vlogging and pointing this camera right back at you. Now I've mentioned before, the Lawa line of lenses, specifically the 7.5 millimeter and the nine millimeter zero D are fantastic wide angle manual lens options for this camera. And specifically the 7.5 millimeter, while it might not be optimal always for production work, will really thrive in using this as a vlogging camera. Now the 7.5 millimeter translates to about 21.5 full frame equivalent and the nine millimeter, just about 26 millimeters. Both lens will work. I think if you're vlogging, the 7.5 would be most ideal. And that's what I use to test this out. But if you already have the nine millimeter and don't wanna shell out more money for the other lens, uh, then obviously you can get by just fine with that. Here's a quick sample of the difference between the two. So as you can see, not a whole lot of difference, but obviously if you're getting this, specifically rigging it out for vlogging and you don't have either of the lenses, the 7.5 might do you better. Now the link below in the description to help you find that lens, you can get it on eBay for cheap or you can get it brand new on Amazon, but it should be what you need to get that field of view to make this actually work for you in your needs as a vlogger. Now another somewhat obvious issue is that the preamps on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera OG were notoriously bad. So as you can hear in the audio, there is a slight hiss. Now you can fiddle around, try different microphones, but in the end they all sort of plug in the same way and it may be unavoidable. But since vlogging is sort of an on the fly production type thing, you're not looking for clean, clear, absolute top notch production track. I don't think it's a deal breaker. You could always record separate audio, but then again, that sort of makes your workflow a little bit more cumbersome down the line. But I do think that plugging straight in with one of these little microphones does the job. Rode makes a really nice small microphone. The one that I have on here right now is from Movo. It's a little bit cheaper and works just as well. Third issue a lot of people have with this camera, which I've spoken about in other videos, is the extremely poor internal battery life. Now, regardless if you're getting this camera to use for vlogging or production work, I always advise getting a battery adapter for this. I find that the MPF batteries are sort of the best solution. They're readily available. They're fairly cheap on Amazon and they make absolutely great adapters for them for this camera, for the Blackmagic 4K and all the other cameras. A lot of times you can get just one of these sort of adapter plates and use the different add-on plugs to use it for any line of camera. And obviously you can stock up on as many NPF batteries as you need to get you through the work. Now, there's different sizes of NPFs. The biggest one will obviously get you through an entire day of shooting. The smaller ones may probably get you by just as well, depending on what your needs are. Now, in this case, I am using a cage to mount the accessories on. This one specifically is from Wind Camera. I find it to be the best option. If you can track one down on eBay, definitely snap it up. 
but Small Rig makes similar ones. And there's a lot of different cages out there you can buy. Whether you wanna use a cage on this or not for vlogging is entirely up to you. I think it works great to sort of get the microphone a little bit more off to the side. However, if you are gonna use this completely stripped down, you can mount your battery adapter to the top. And then on the bottom screw port, you can mount your microphone. Now I'm using a little small rig magic arm, very tiny, to sort of put my microphone onto the side of the cage, keep it out of the way, and it also gives me some sort of adjustability on where I'm pointing that microphone. Links to all this stuff is available in the description below. Now another thing you're gonna to wanna to use while vlogging and pretty much while using this camera in general is a good variable ND filter. You wanna be sure you have one that has infrared cut, otherwise you risk uh, altering the colors in your footage, especially when you start stopping it down a little bit too much. Now, if you're already using some of the lenses that I've recommended before for this camera, specifically the Panasonic 12 to 35, and you've got your neutral density filter for that camera, there's no need to buy one for this. You can simply buy a step-up ring. Now the 7.5 millimeter has a 46 millimeter front ring and the nine millimeter has a 49 millimeter front ring. So simply buy your adapter accordingly to match it up with whatever neutral density filter you already have for what other lenses you're already using on this camera just to save yourself a little bit of money. Now, another issue uh, with shooting this way, especially with this lens, which doesn't have any stabilization, is that depending on the way you hold it, as you walk, it gets a little bit shaky. So uh, if you plan on doing a lot of walking around in your vlog, I may suggest picking up one of those little Joby tripods. Very mobile, very packable. You can use it for a lot of different uses. And if you're gonna use it for vlogging, it makes a great extension handle to sort of get that camera out in front of you and maybe get you a little bit more stability in your vlogging. Now, obviously you're using these lenses that are very wide angle, so that sort of minimizes the impact of camera shake to a degree. But because you can't have any image stabilization on this, it can be tough to beat it out. Now, another thing I stress a lot when talking about these cameras is shooting in RAW. I personally almost always shoot in RAW. I think it is the way to go. It's sort of why these cameras were built and why they thrive to begin with. Obviously, since it is vlogging and it's not expected to be top notch, you can get away with ProRes and that'll get you a little bit more record time. But even if you're shooting raw, there's lots of options for memory cards that should get you enough storage to shoot a full day in RAW, the 512 gigabyte card will last forever. Not really forever, but it will get you several hours of footage shooting RAW and more than enough if you're shooting ProRes. Now I learned something recently that sort of changed my idea of RAW workflow. Now typically in the past, I've always said, if you're gonna shoot RAW, you have to know a little bit about DaVinci Resolve to make proxies to then edit your footage in Premiere or your editing platform of choice. Well, I recently found a way that you can actually edit the DNG RAW files in Premiere natively. Now to do that, you simply open up Premiere and then open up your Finder window and open up the folder that has the take that you plan to use. Click on the very first image file click and drag that into your project bin. Now there's no need to select all of them, only the first one. And once you drop that in, it'll actually load the entire clip and assemble all the DNG raw files together and give you one solid flowing clip to edit. So if I'm late to the party on that, I apologize, but I'm letting you know now that if you wanna shoot raw and don't wanna go through the extensive workflow of taking it back and forth to resolve, this is now an option for you to shoot raw on this camera and edit it natively in Premiere. Now the settings of these clips, once you bring it into Premiere, are a little bit more limited than if you were going through Resolve. You can't change the ISO, you can adjust the exposure, you can adjust your color temperature, uh, but you don't have quite the full amount of handles that you would have otherwise. But if you're really just bringing this in, dropping a LUT on it, making a few minor adjustments to your exposure and color temperature, it'll definitely get you by and let you use the full capacity of this camera and edit it natively within Premiere. If you don't want to shoot raw, obviously ProRes is always available to you. And in a vlogging setting, I think ProRes is completely usable. Now you may be wondering without a monitor on this and without being able to flip the screen around, how are you supposed to keep yourself in focus? And especially without autofocus on this camera and especially not on this lens, this is a fully manual lens, how are you supposed to keep yourself in focus in a vlogging setting? Well now fortunately because this is a fully manual lens and it has hard stops, it's all physical as opposed to sort of electronic. Uh, what you can do is essentially find your focus initially before you go out on the barrel of the lens, just check what the numbers are. Obviously take a few practice shots, you know, hold it out, make your adjustment, shoot for a little bit, 
take a look at the back, see if you're in focus, you know, sort of dial it in that way. The good news is, unless your arm for some reason grows or shrinks overnight, it's always gonna be the same no matter what when you use this camera. With the exception again, if you're gonna put it onto a sort of extension handle, then you may need to recheck that focus. But to quote Romp Appeal, you can sort of set it and forget it. Once you know when you are in focus on this camera and you keep track of the mark on the lens, set it and then shoot yourself. If you're gonna then turn it around, get some shots of other stuff to go with your vlog and then go back to filming yourself, then you just sort of find your point on the lens, reset it and continue shooting. So that may take a little bit of time at first to dial that in, figure it out. But again, once you know it, it's always gonna be there for you. Now, obviously you could rig a monitor to this, to the side, there's a lot of options out there. I think that would sort of make it a little bit too cumbersome for you. And generally when you're using such a wide lens, such as the 7.5 millimeter and you keep it pointed at yourself, there's no real need to know exactly what's going on around you. Now, as far as memory cards go, I have a video that I produced a while ago that highlights what memory cards will work for this camera. The good news is you can buy brand new memory cards off of Amazon. Make sure you buy the ones that are above or at 128 gigabytes. If you go below 128, they generally don't work. So 128, 256, 512, all those cards from Kingston that I have linked below will work in this camera and will allow you to shoot raw. So now, the big question, is this really a vlogging camera? Well, I think absolutely you can make use of this for vlogging. Is it exactly what everyone out there is using? Is it gonna be super easy? Can you flip the monitor around and have autofocus and all the goodies that you normally see in a vlogging camera? No, but with a little bit of practice, a little bit of using this camera and a little bit of confidence in yourself and the shots you're getting, I think it is definitely usable to that capacity. But on the flip side of that, if you need autofocus, if you need image stabilization, if you need to monitor yourself while shooting and maybe get some better microphones going into it, this might not be your option, but I think as it stands now, I've got this rigged out for you know very affordable price, you can definitely use this for vlogging. The Blackmagic is an exceptionally affordable camera, especially considering the quality of footage that it creates. Now, a lot of people will write and say, oh, it's not that low anymore, you can't find one for under 700 bucks, yada, 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 to which I'd say, take your time. You know, you gotta shop around for these a little bit. Just cause you pop on eBay one day, type in BNP CCOG and all they have are the options for 700 bucks, doesn't mean that that is the price of entry. A lot of times the cameras obviously that are cheaper when they pop up, they sell very fast. So the trick to finding one of these at a lower price means you gotta be checking every day, multiple times a day, and just sort of take your time and be patient and wait for the deal because I promise you, I check regularly and I still see these cameras going for between three and 400 bucks. So again, take your time, be patient, they are there to be had. Now the good news is if you're buying this exclusively for vlogging, you can generally even get a better deal because a lot of times you'll find these cameras on the used market and things like the micro HDMI port are broken and that means you can get it for a lower price and if you're vlogging you don't really need a monitor then that might not be a deal breaker for you the way that it is for people that want to rig this out for production work but if you are trying to find this camera for production work and you just want to use it for vlogging on the side take the time find the deal for one that is in great shape so obviously i still believe that this is a outstanding camera you can use for just about anything any style of work and now vlogging is added to that as well uh, streaming if you really want to, but high-end quality production work. Should this be your A camera, the one that you only offer your clients? Probably not. Like I said, in some settings, it might not be optimal. It's an older camera. It could have issues down the road. But if this is your camera for hobby work, for making great, great quality content, I still think it's just as outstanding today as it was the day that it came out. Now, of course, you're always gonna find a better camera out there and to each their own, everyone's gonna have different tastes, but I do think that this is an outstanding piece of equipment for you to use and have in your arsenal. It's small, it's compact, it'll match with a lot of other cameras, and the fact that it gives you raw footage that you can use very easily and edit on a home computer given that it's HD raw and will still stack up against some 4K top-end cameras I think makes it a powerful, powerful tool. And that's it. Thanks so much, guys. If you have any other questions about the BMP CC OG 2.5K, 4K filmmaking in general, feel free to ask those in the comments below. I try and answer those to the best of my ability. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.